Hey, hey, what's happening, everybody? Kent Clothier here. Hopefully, everybody is having a good day. Welcome to today's presentation. Glad you made it. If you can hear me loud and clear, do me a favor and go into the uh, little chat part there or the um, questions and let me know that you can hear me. I can see that David's in there. Let me know where you are coming in from. City and state, say hello. Love to shout you out here while we're waiting for people to get on the call here. Uh, let's see here. Brent coming in from Knoxville. What's going on? Lorelei coming in from Boston. David uh, coming in from Augusta. Let's see here. Let's see if I can break this out where I can see you guys better. A little bit easier on the eyes here because God knows I'm going freaking blind. All right. Um, the scene from Michigan. I've got Robert Hicks coming in from Vegas. Chuck in from San Jose. What's going on, Steve? Coming in from Vegas. Derek from Indianapolis. Stacy from Chicago. Uh, Michael from Charlotte. What is going on? Brian Burke coming in from Portland, Oregon. Les from Fort Worth. Anthony from New Jersey. Alma coming in from Texas. Anthony coming in from Fort Worth. Right there, my own. Born and raised right there in Dallas, Texas. Billy coming in from Maryland. Daryl from uh, Atlanta, Bruno from New Jersey. Brent, what's going on? Good to see you. Clint coming in from San Diego, right here where I'm at tonight. Dina from Raleigh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Julie Ray from Phoenix. Good to see you guys. All right. Well, we are going to get started here in just a second. We're going to let a few more people get on. As I said, as you're coming on, do me a favor and let me know where you're coming in from. And while you're doing that, go ahead and uh, get a pad and paper out. Go grab a bottle of water, do something, you know, to kind of get all the distractions. If you got uh, your phone, put it on mute, you know, get it away from you here. This is only going to be 35, 45 minutes, but I promise you it's going to be time well spent. Uh, we are going to uh, have some fun. I'm going to give away some uh, money here. So don't, buddy, make sure that I absolutely do that. Um, don't want to miss out on doing that. Um, so... Like I said, we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna give away some money. We're gonna give away some uh, prizes. We're going to have uh, 30 to 45 minutes here of me just kind of breaking down exactly what I told you guys I was gonna do, which is effectively how you go off and really scale businesses very, very quickly, which is for the mo for most people out there is a real struggle. Um, most of you, if you're watching this today, I can guarantee, almost guarantee you that you are still in the grinder phase of business where the business kind of owns you and you do not own it where you are stuck doing tasks inside of the business that you don't want to be doing and so if that is you do me a favor and go in the uh, comment section there exactly where you just the question area and let me know that uh, that's you just say that's me so I know that I got everybody on here who's kind of feeling the same pain and more importantly I want each of you to see how many people on this call right now are going to relate to that exact same thing that that uh it is you are not alone that this is a 100 the way that most of the businesses operate out there where you are stuck doing things that you don't want to do that you feel trapped doing and ultimately have kept you from being able to actually to scale this thing to any kind of um you know any kind of level that uh, resembles something outside of hey i just have a high paying job so that's what we're going to cover tonight like i said go get your water right get a uh, pad of paper get a pen get all the distractions away from you get the kids out of the room get the uh you know get the dog get the cat out of the room give yourself the opportunity to really really understand what i'm going to break down for you because i'm going to break it down for you into five what I call my P5 system. These are five main pillars of what it looks like to go scale a business. And it is the process, the framework, the formula that we follow over and over and over and over and over again. And at this point, I have now scaled. We just uh, did it again. This is now my 14th business that we have scaled to uh, seven figures. Uh, I've scaled many to eight figures, nine figures, and even one to 10 figures and yes that is a billion dollars a year when absolutely happened and ironically i did that by the time i was 30 years old so you guys are really going to uh, get a lot of value out of this all right so let me go ahead and turn this webcam off because that'll be terribly distracting for me um again as my new people are coming on do me a big favor and just let me know where you're coming in from and here's one of the uh, rules we're going to go down 
those who engage with me the most when I'm asking questions, I'm asking you to shout out or whatever, I'm going to randomly pick four people. And those four people, I'm going to give each one of them a $250 gift card, American Express gift card. So what will happen is at the end of this, I will randomly pick four people who I believe have been playing full out with me this entire time, which means engage, guys. You know, if you want to uh, learn something, which clearly you do, that's why you're here, then you got to go and immerse yourself in that experience. It's not hard to do. And uh, again, I promise you, I'll move very fast. I'll keep the content rich. And so it's not going to be hard for you to pay attention. Definitely take some screenshots if you want to. Definitely um, uh, take good notes and definitely engage. And like I said, I'm going to make it fun for you because four of you at the end of this are going to uh, get 250 bucks from me just for showing up. Right? If that gets you excited, give me a hell yeah in the comments. I mean, hell, you probably didn't know you were going to get on here and so, somebody's wanting to walk away. 250 bucks for hanging out with somebody that can uh, change their life for uh, 30 to 45 minutes. So, all right, loud and clear. Here we go. We got uh, lots of hell yeahs in there. I got Anthony, Nanette, Tom, John, Andre, Fanny. Good. I got already starting to see people that are playing full out. Love this. Uh, love this. Love this. Love this. Um, Rick Hicks says, uh, not a question, but I can't wait for scale and escape. Rick, Rick, I love that, man. All right, here we go. Let's jump into it. So let me get over here and get my cursor on it. So those, those of you that don't know who I am, let me give you the quick little obligatory um, breakdown real quick. I am the founder and CEO of a company called Real Estate Worldwide. Um, I've been featured all over the country and all kinds of Articles online, Entrepreneur Magazine, Forbes Magazine, Inc. Magazine. I've had several companies on the Inc. 5000, CNN, Yahoo, you name it. I started a grocery wholesaling business in high school. Um, and by the time of age, age 27, I had grown that business to doing $800 million a year in sales. By the time I was 30, I grew that same company to $1.8 billion a year. Uh, and the seventh largest privately held company in the state of Florida. That was 20 years ago. But nonetheless, that all happened. And as fate would have it, that process taught me a lot about what it looks like to build a business, taught me a lot about you know, the right ways to do things, equally taught me a lot about the wrong ways to do things, because I was the guy that built businesses uh, in my 20s you know, at the expense of anything and everything that mattered. I lived and breathed the business. It's all I cared about. So not not a hard um, not a hard connection to make that, that to figure out that yeah uh, I didn't have a successful marriage and I had you know kind of fractured relationships with my kids because I was just the moron that was completely committed to building the business and but luckily by the age of time I was 30 uh, on March 14th of 2000 I walked out of that business had a run in with my partners and then my life and everything around me kind of blew up. I proceeded to, over the next 22 months uh, to lose every single dollar I had worked for, millions and millions and millions of dollars. But I couldn't just lose the money, right? I couldn't just go off and walk out on, uh, on my partners because I was so full of crap and so pissed off because we were um, getting into some ownership disputes. Couldn't just do that. I had to go and start a competing business against them. Uh, and then we had to get into the whole suing each other and going back and forth and then ultimately look up and uh, had effectively run out of money. I made all kinds of bad decisions. It wasn't drugs, it wasn't alcohol, it wasn't sex, it wasn't anything like that. It all had to do with business. I just made a bunch of really bad boneheaded decisions and thought I was better than I was. And it only took me 22 months to lose all of it. And it was a brutal, brutal, brutal experience. Um, but ultimately it led me here, right? Because what happened is I had nowhere to turn, had nowhere to go. And then I kind of fell into real estate investing and became really, really good at it. So now I've been in real estate for the last 20 years. I started as a real estate wholesaler down in South Florida, Broward County, Palm Beach County, Miami-Dade County ultimately took that business and have grown it along with my family which to what has now become known as REI Nation. Any of you that are on bigger pockets uh, could, you know, uh, look up REI Nation. You'll see my brother Chris is very, very active on there. Uh, our company right there currently flips 950 single family homes in a year in 11 different markets. 
Uh, we operate that company basically where we buy single family houses. We turn around and rehab those houses and put renters in place and sell those houses to investors all over the country. And we stay in place and manage the houses for them. In addition to that, one of my companies wholesales another two to 300 properties a year. As I said, when we manage the houses, our company currently manages 7,500 single family houses, nothing multifamily, single family houses uh, all over those 11 markets. Personally, own a little over 100 rentals, own uh, commercial units as well, some retail. I've got uh, on my smart program and inside of our coaching programs and masterminds and everything, we roughly have about 60,000 paying members in that entire organization. I own several. Um, not hedge funds, they're Reg D and they're Reg A funds that we use to invest in a lot of properties. And so there's a lot going on in this organization. And I share all that with you because I want you to understand that a lot can happen when you have a very long view of business and you're not in it for the quick, quick hustle, when you're not in it for the quick buck, when you understand fundamentally what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go, which is what I'm going to share here. But I also want to share another quick story with you, and that is that not only had I lost a business, uh, but then once I really got these businesses going uh, back in 2012, I had a run in with a, where I was on an airplane with uh, my wife and my young daughter, because I, you know, here's what I'll share with you. I fell into the trap of, again, although I was now remarried and I've got a new little uh, five-year-old, uh, you know, and I'm trying to do everything I can to be a present father and a present husband and do all these things. Clearly, I have a knack for business and I'm kind of running and building these things all over again and could easily fall into the trap of becoming the guy that I was before. But luckily, God had a different plan for me. And sure enough, um, in May of 2012, um, I was on a plane and my wife and I and young daughter were sitting at two different areas of the plane. And although we were, they had flown up to meet me in Memphis, Tennessee, we were connecting going home uh, through Atlanta, Georgia on a Delta flight, flying back to our home in Florida. But because we had booked our itineraries on two separate uh, times, we were separated in the plane. I was in 19A, they were in 26 E and F. And wouldn't you know, um, the plane begins to fill with smoke and the plane catches fire. And um, I look up and my worst fears are manifesting right in front of me. And that is that this plane is about to crash. And sure enough, the um, flight attendants come on that plane and tell us that we uh, are making an emergency landing. We are being diverted to Tampa, Florida. Sure enough, the um, ultimately, there's a lot to the story, so I'm not going to get into all of it. Ultimately, the pilot comes on there and tells us that they are going to give us instructions that we are going to need to brace for impact, brace for impact, brace for impact. And that ultimately means put your hand on the back of the seat, put your head down between your legs, and kind of hope for the best. Uh, unfortunately, in that moment in time, because my wife and daughter were sitting across from me, people are screaming and crying. And, you know, you can imagine all the, the hysteria in that moment. But I can only hear one scream. I can only hear one cry. That is my young daughter crying for me and crying for daddy. And I can't get to her. And which is a really, really humbling and heartbreaking situation to be in. Because what happens in that moment is you get ultimate clarity. God, please get me down on the ground and I will never take life for granted again. I will never, uh, ever take life for granted again. And sure enough, Clearly, because I'm talking to you guys here today, uh, that's exactly what happened. You know, we got on the ground, and uh, from that point forward, I made a decision that I would never, ever, ever take life for granted, and that I would build businesses to serve me, and I would build businesses to create time freedom, and I would build businesses that didn't take me away from my family. And so that is a huge, huge part of what goes, you know, of, of my life now because I know what it looks like to build a business. I know what it looks like to lose a business. And I know what it looks like. And this is, you know, camera footage directly from my phone because I recorded a, a, a video to my son, hoping that when we crashed, somehow, some way they would find, um, they would find my phone. And it is 
a brutal, brutal video for me to watch. I mean, I'm shaking as I'm watching it right now. But it, it, there is a point to all this. The purpose of my business and the purpose of me sharing what I'm going to share with you right now and the purpose of you need to be inspired and pushed to get out of the rat race and to actually build something that matters is you need to create more time. And as long as you be, are trapped between what's going on in your ears, in between your ears, in your brain, believing that somehow time is promised to you, or I'll get to this later, or nobody can do it better than me, or I don't know how to hire, you can use all this language that keeps you from achieving amazing results, then you are, in essence, trapped. And you are 100% um, will always be trapped doing things that you shouldn't be doing and taking away from the things that, that actually matter most. Which leads us to how do you do that? So first thing I'm gonna tell you to write down is P5, the P5 framework. And so this is exactly what that is. And this, as I promised you, is going to be a good hardcore training. Uh, it is not gonna be filled with fluff and nonsense. I'm gonna give you, I could, I could literally do five days on this training. I'm gonna spend approximately 40 minutes. So I'm gonna move very quick, but you will get the idea very, very fast, right? So it's purpose, it's prospects, it's process, profits, and then progress. And so now, uh, here we go. So first, under purpose. What is the purpose of the business? And I think as somebody that it is very, very simple as we get into a business, and I'm gonna to talk to you specifically about real estate investing because that's you know a lot of what we all know here. It is really simple to become highly transactional and go from deal to deal to deal, uh, trying to make a little bit of money. Hey, Kent, I'm just trying to get, you know, make $100,000. I'm just trying to make $250,000. I'm just trying to make a million dollars a year. That has nothing to do with what the purpose of the actual business is. That is a money grab. And so you have to understand fundamentally, if you want to scale, if you want to create time freedom, time freedom is created through leverage. Time And write that down. Time freedom, financial freedom, is created through leverage. Leverage means you have to actually be able to scale something. You have to put systems and processes and automation and personnel in place. And the way you have to do that and get comfortable doing that is it all starts with number one. What is the purpose of what you're trying to accomplish? What is the purpose of the business? for you personally. So for, mm -hmm. as an example, when I'm looking at our investing business right now, just specifically, right? I own an investing business, I own Reg A funds, I own Reg D funds, we own a property management company, we own a um, rehabbing company, we own a real estate brokerage, we own a software company, we own a coaching company, we own a mastermind, we own a lot of companies. And every one of them, there is a purpose. So as it relates to REI Nation, that particular company, that's what I'm going to use as my example for you. Um, create more time freedom for me and my family. Number one. Number two, the purpose of the business is to allow customers to purchase properties from our company efficiently. And this is very important, continually. I will tell you that I know my audience very, very well. So I have no problem telling you that if you're watching this in all likelihood, you are highly transactional. You don't have customers that buy from you continually. But what would change if you did? What would happen if you could reposition your company like we have to where we're only selling to investors that buy two, three, four, five properties a year from us? We know exactly what they want. Why, what does that, how does that help? Well, it allows me to cr create a predictable outcome. It creates efficiency. Again, number three, we want to do this in an automated fashion, thus creating more time freedom, not less. That is the purpose of the business. And ultimately, we want to provide so much value to our customers that they are begging to do more business with us and become our biggest advocates. So going over to the questions, what do you think is, and I'm gonna do this at the end, uh, at the end of each one of these. 
What do you think is the biggest, if I had to ask you, you were sitting here in my office with me out here in San Diego, California, right? It is 420 out here. Ironically, 420 in California, who would have ever thought? Um, when I say I want to provide so much value to my customers that they are begging to do more business with us and become our biggest advocates, what do you think the benefit to the business is? Let me see somebody go into the questions and answer. What do you think the benefit to the business is by customers begging to do more business with us and becoming our biggest advocates? St. Clair says, more consistency. Ralph says, them, helping other folks, repeat business and referrals. There you go, that, that, R. Walters. Um, you're not just filling it, they're doing marketing for you word by mouth, there you go. Uh, your marketing costs decrease, they do work for you, recurring revenue, quality leads, all of the above. It's leverage, guys, think about it. It's massive leverage. If I am, you know, think about if I create, if you create a business to where your customers are buying from you on repeat, instead of you chasing transaction to transaction to transaction. A customer is buying from you on, on repeat and you're providing so much exceptional service to them and profitability to them that they are begging to do more business. They're putting demand on the business, which that's an amazing problem to have. Every problem will always have a, I mean, every business will always have a problem. The problem you want is that you have too much demand, period. So they're putting pressure on you, which then allows you to go and confidently invest more money in marketing, creating more opportunity, more deals for those customers. And then even bigger, they become your biggest advocates and they're telling the world about what you're doing for you. Somebody said driving down your cost of marketing, driving down 100%. My marketing goes effectively to zero because my customers are bringing me more customers that are just like them. They want to accomplish this because people always hang out with their tribe. People always congregate together. We hang out with people that we like, know, and trust. Like-minded people congregate together. Dentists hang out with dentists. Doctors hang out with doctors. Lawyers hang out with lawyers. People with money that are buying properties for investment turn around and they have other friends that are doing the same thing. They're entrepreneurial, their business, whatever. And they're, so they're going to have the same desires, which means your business has leverage. It has the ability to use those same automations, those same systems, those same processes to just do orders over and over and over again. As long as your business is running from a one-off, oh, what about this deal over here in North County? What about this deal in the South County? What about this deal in the East County? And every deal looks different and every, it's different price points. Well, this one's $2 million, this one's $50,000. And there's no consistency. As long as that e exists in your business, you will always struggle to scale, always, always. Prospects, number two, let's go on. This starts with the customers. Well, if I understand what the purpose of the business is, now who am I serving? What are their problems? What problem am I trying to solve for them? So again, using the exact same example, let's go in here. So the people that want to buy rent that want to buy rental properties from us at REI Nation, this is an example of who they are. They are busy professionals. They are looking to acquire rentals. They don't have time, but they do have capital and they do have credit and they do have desire. They want to. They don't want to worry about a property thousands of miles away. They want the process to be easy and all aspects handled. They want to understand wealth building and need access. They want to, they want, they value service and experience as much as cash flow. So if I under, imagine if you understood who every one of your customers, your repeat customers were to, this is a very high level. You could get infinitely more refined than this. If I understand this about my customers, think about, how, and everybody in my organization does, think about how we're all working from the same playbook and how we're all attacking the business the exact same way. Because then it allows us to go to the next logical place, which is where can we reach these people? Where do they hang out online? What do they read? What do they watch on television? What do they do for a living? Is there any company businesses that own this customer right now? Are there businesses out there that uh, financial planners who are working with these people right now, who are talking to these people every day, where if I could, create a partnership with a financial planner, they will bring me these customers every single day. That's an example of that. 
what do they do for a living? Well, most of my customers are entrepreneurs, right? They own e-commerce stores. They are online entrepreneurs. They are doctors. They are lawyers. They are dentists. They are airline pilots. Okay, so where do those people hang out? Where do I reach them? What are the trade magazines? What are they, where are they hanging out online? Are they on Facebook? Do they, are they on Twitter? Are they on Instagram? What television shows do they watch? Do they watch Fox? Do they watch CNN? Do they watch MSNBC? What do they read? Do they read the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, USA Today? If I know all of this about my customers, think of how streamlined my process becomes because I actually know what matters to them. This is how you start to think about the business differently. Now, here's the beauty of this. And I want everybody to write this down. Is that your competition will never do the simple stuff that I'm teaching you tonight, right? Again, this is going to be 45 minutes. I could do five days on this. But in 45 minutes, you're going to get a very, very high level framework here that your customers wouldn't even, I mean, your competition won't even bother to do that. So it is so easy for you not only to stand out in your market, but it is so easy for you to streamline and create these processes, create this structure to start implementing these strategies over the course of the next 12 months and start finally scaling your business. You just have to get down in the weeds of it and look at the business through, a different, through different optics. Most of you are looking at this business very, very transactional, and it just doesn't have to be that way. So now go to number three, process. Before I go to number three, are there any questions um, on the first two? I'm going to just stop here and see if I got anybody got any questions for me right now. John says implementation and simplicity is key. All clear, it's making sense, good stuff, good. Just keeping it nice and easy here. Uh, Rick says building reports, the details to separate you from the rest, as you said, there you go. All right, so now we're all ready to P3, right? Of our P5 framework. Is this about investors buying the homes, Trina? Yes, that is exactly what this is about. Um, how much staff out of that gate? John, you could easily scale a business with three people including yourself and then you go for and then you go up from there right as the business grows these businesses have a tendency to grow horizontally meaning meaning they grow outwards it's not layers of management it's just adding acquisitions people adding dispositions people if you're wholesaling uh in the wholesaling business which is the easiest business to get into in the real estate investing side wholesalers have a tendency to uh scale horizontally okay process now we understand who our customer is. We understand exactly what our purpose is. We understand what they are trying to accomplish in their lives. How can we actually serve it up to them? How do we efficiently serve the customer and make them a repeat buyer? And by the way, I'm using this for a real estate investing business. Um, Trina asked, the reality of it is, is this applicable across every business? We do the exact same thing for my software company exact same thing for my property management company exact same thing for my coaching company and training company and mastermind company and hedge funds that we run it is all the same the p5 process is exactly the same across all of them nothing changes okay so process how do we efficiently serve the customer make them a repeat buyer because we need our customers to be repeat buyers because it is that is part of the process I need customer. I need to treat people right or they come back to me over and over and over again. If I'm constantly chasing and have to constantly go create new transactions, this is why realtors uh, have a tendency to suffer so much in business is because they are so focused on first time home buyers or retail buyers that they only get one bite at the apple. When what most realtors don't realize is that investors represent 35% of the market and investors buy multiple properties a year. So if you just focus your attention as a realtor on investors, you would create a much more successful business. Most will never see it. So how do we solve multiple problems for them and keep them in our system? How do we maximize profits while also maximizing efficiency and maximizing service? These are the big questions here. So I want everybody to pay attention here because I'm gonna 
I'm not going to, I'm going to get a little deep here for you. Um, and I'm going to help you understand uh, a high level principle and how this works in a process. So extend, I want you to write, take a picture of it or write this down, extend the LTV of our client. And what that stands for is lifetime value. If I can get my customer and I understand exactly how much they will spend over the next six months, the next year, the next five years for me. So at, for an example, we know on average when we sell a property to one of our clients inside of our current business, they're going to buy two and a half properties on average a year from us. We also know that our margin on that is approximately 20 grand. Therefore, a customer is worth, one customer is worth $50,000 in revenue to our business every year. We also know that one in four of our clients will result in a referral that will do the exact same thing. So not only do they bring $50,000, but 25% of the time, they're bringing somebody else in that will also spend $50,000. So it's not just 50,000, it's another 12,500 that that customer is worth to me every year. So each customer represents $62,000 in just new sales to the business every single year. And because I know that about my business, it allows me to play a very different game than my competition because I get to control what I spend to acquire them. When most people look at the business, they're like, well, I'm just trying to make 50 grand on this deal. I'm just trying to make 10 grand on this deal. I'm just trying to make 20 grand on a deal. And when you are out there doing that, what you need to understand is there are guys like me and girls like me that look at this through a lens of this, the optics that this is a business and we will beat you every time. Because if you're looking at it like you're trying to make 10 grand, I'm looking at it like I know ultimately I'm going to make $62,000 a year. So therefore I can spend a lot more to acquire that customer. I can do a lot more because I understand the math, right? So when we look at our business, we focused on creating cash flow property investments for our investors. Like I said, we buy, rehab, rent, sell 950 single family homes a year in 11 markets. As I said, we manage 7,500 process. We own the process end to end. We know that our median house is 150 to 200 grand. We know that we create 8% cash on cash prior to appreciation, depreciation, and leverage. We understand exactly what the journey looks like for our customers, how we are going to profit and make money on them and help them make money the entire way. I can tell you, we didn't just get there. Somebody asked the question earlier, how did you kind of get this uh, to this place? Guys, I started wholesaling in 2003, and then we quickly added rehabbing service and then added property management. All we were trying to do is extend the value of the customer, make them want to buy more houses from us, solve real problems for them where they came back into our ecosystem over and over and over and over again. So now we've added rehabbing services, and then we added property management, and then we added funding, and then we added insurance, and then now and we grew to 11 markets. And so we have 2,300 clients that we manage 7,500, give or take, properties for right now. We're in all these markets that you see on the screen, right? We started in one. It was Memphis, Tennessee. And it grew organically over the course of about 15, 16 years. But we're constantly focused on playing a different game than everybody else. How can we make it easy on the buyer? How can we extend the lifetime value of the customer? Because of, and how do we understand the math so well? Think of it like this. This is a really, you know, a, another easy example to think about. If you are a wholesaler and you are ill-equipped, right? Meaning the only thing you know how to do is effectively buy a house and pay all cash for it. If that's the only thing you know how to do. Then here's a great example of how you get beat by not having leverage and not having systems and not having process and not understand your customer, not only on the buy side, but even on the sell side, not, you know, having people on your team that know how to do stuff because a deal comes in and if the only thing you can do is pay cash for the deal, well, then you're going to run up against competitors that know how to do 
are they going to have the opportunity because they have scaled they have a section of their business that can do listings they have another section of their business that knows how to do seller finance deals creative deals and so how you how this works is look you're sitting here and the only thing i know how to do is paying cash or you become the company that understands how do i extend the lifetime value of my customer how do i make sure that i'm i'm getting everything out of every opportunity well ideally you have several units and or individuals and or yourself inside of there that understands hey i can wholesale this deal and make cash or I can put it into my rental portfolio, or I can acquire it and sell it with seller financing in place, or I can acquire it and sell it in turnkey, which means I'm gonna make money on the cash side of it, I'm gonna make money on the property management side, I'm gonna make money on the maintenance side, I'm gonna make money on the insurance side. And then ultimately, as I move in the, the deals across, then I can also make money on the funding, I can also make money on title, and I can also make money on the servicing when you have and you scaled your business and you have these these pockets of profitability in place ultimately what it's doing is it's extending the process is extending the lifetime value of the customer making them more valuable to you and giving you more opportunity to profit from them it is making it so much easier on you and the customer but if you're just looking at it as a one trick pony if you're just looking at it as i'm just trying to chase the deal i'm just trying to, and i don't know how you know I, I, I this is all i know kent i can't slow down and learn anything else kent i can't slow down and scale kent i don't know how to hire people kent i don't know i'm not good at this all the bullshit we tell ourselves then you will forever be stuck in that process you have to take this very seriously and again it starts with what is the purpose who are my prospects and what is my process on how that I can serve those people efficiently by creating an efficient process to help buyers acquire profitable assets. They naturally want to buy more that extends the lifetime value. By creating an efficient process to help sellers, we have the ability to maximize every lead like I just showed you and, and, and can afford to pay more for each lead thus wiping out our competition i know a customer is worth sixty thousand dollars to me if you're out there day to day thinking man i'm just trying to make ten thousand dollars on a deal i know i can outspend you i'll spend ten thousand dollars to acquire the customer you're trying to spend a hundred why would i spend ten thousand because it's worth sixty thousand to me i know the math i have the process i've scaled i understand how to take out the competition this is how we dominate in markets and this is how you can do the exact same thing. This is not hard. This is what we show people how to do. Focus on maximizing. Oh, I'm sorry. So now let's go with that. Number three, are there any um, questions? I don't know. Again, guys, I, I, I told you, I warned you this was going to be high level. I, I have no doubt that um, there are questions here, but I've got time for one or two. If somebody has, before I go to, uh, step four and five. No questions. I see Trina. I see John Clark. I see Hans. Tom. Uh, Tom says this info is the shiznit. I love that. All right, here we go. Let's go to number four. Now we move on to profits. Right. So, so many times, especially when we as new entrepreneurs are stuck in the hustler mode. Um, we are, we're, we're stuck and we're kind of trapped by our own hamster wheel, right? It's a very slippery slope. We've gone out there and can't, you know, I'm so focused on trying to go off and walk away from my W-2 job. I'm so focused on trying to, you know, make 50,000, 75, 100, 250, 500, a million dollars a year. I'm, uh, I, I can't slow down to do these things. And if I do slow down, I, I mean, I can't even slow down to make sure that I'm taking advantage of all the opportunities that are in my business if that is the way you have felt or currently feel go in the comments again and, and give me a hell yeah i just want to make sure that i'm hitting on exactly what you guys uh are dealing with and have dealt with hell yeah facts hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah okay yeah see this is super common i want you guys to look up in the comments and see how common this actually is 
almost all of you are dealing with this, right? Keep coming in, keep coming in, keep coming in, right? This is not, you feel like you're on an island. You're not. This is what people are faced with all the time. And so it isn't natural to go from the hustler to the CEO. This stuff is not taught. This is the reason why we teach it is because we're pretty much, I would argue, some of the only people in this industry that are qualified to teach it because we actually do it every single day. Most of the guys, right, you know, just wait another 20 minutes and there'll be another guru sitting on the front of a Ferrari or a Lamborghini up on Instagram holding a check telling you how they, they're crushing the world after they flipped 11 fucking houses, okay? There's, that is the world we live in. I'm sorry, excuse my language, but that is just the world we live in. And so it's really, there's very few people that can tell you, hey, let me show you how to turn it into a business. And that's what this is about. That's what this P5 framework is to give you the framework so you understand that there is a different way right? And the move from the hustler to the CEO requires attention, requires, you know, understanding the process, requires looking at this on a daily basis, requires going through each one of these steps here, okay? But now we've moved to profits. And one of the things I see all the time with the hustlers is they are not focused on profitability. Um, you have to focus on maximizing profits, as I just mentioned, through maximizing the lifetime value, creating as much revenue through the client experience as you possibly can. You equally have to do it by running your business by the numbers. I guarantee you there are 141 people on here. The vast majority of you are currently doing deals. If I ask you three numbers right now, the three most important numbers in your business, most of you could not tell me. And I'm gonna get to them in a minute but you're running your business by the numbers. Side note, I said this earlier, your competition will never do this. You can 100% count on your competition's mediocrity. It is not that hard to be great because your competition sucks so bad. And so just do what they won't do. You know, think about, there are, I'll give you a great example of this. There were 750 people registered for this, this tonight. 141 of you, congratulations, made it on here. 141, that's 20%. You can literally count on 80% of your competition, they can't even show up, much less do what we're talking about doing here. It's not hard to separate yourself from your competition. Then in large part, they will do it for you. So profits, again, some basic numbers, right? What is a buyer worth to you in your business? I just walked you through some of that. What is a seller worth to you in your business? I just walked you through some of that. Do either of them refer clients? And again, what is the value of that? What does it look like over 90 days, 180 days, 365, three years? What is the value of a customer when they come in? Because when you know this data and you manage to it, you're playing a completely different game in the business. You're starting to evolve and become a CEO. You're starting to become a business leader and you're starting to escape the grind that most of you are trapped in right now. When I talk to you about the numbers, that most of you, again, this is not me being harsh. This is not me being critical. This is just me being matter of fact and, and being an expert in this business and have done this for so long. You have to know your KPIs, but one of them that you must know today, by the end of the evening, what is your cost per lead? What does a lead cost you? By channel, whether you use in direct mail, whether you use in ringless voicemail, text messaging, cold calling, um, door knocking, bandit signs, I don't care. What is a lead cost? Because it should be on average on the blend between $75 and $150. Your cost per deal should effectively be 20 times that, meaning it should take you 20 leads on average to do a deal. So if my cost per lead is $150 and it takes me 20 of them, I have to get 20 leads, I have to talk to 20 people in order to get a deal done, my cost per deal is then $3,000. And your revenue per deal for a healthy business should be three to five times what your cost per deal is. If, I, if it costs me $3,000 to do, to create a deal, and to talk to 20 people, then it, my revenue on that should be $9,000 to $15,000. If you don't know the math, you cannot scale, period. 
in the discussion. You must know the math. I don't care whether you've done one. I don't care the way that you've done 101 or 1,000 deals. You'd be shocked at how many people I run into that don't know these three basic numbers. But if you gave me these three basic numbers in your business, I could tell you exactly the problem in your business right now without knowing what market it is, without knowing one thing. These are the key performance indicators at a minimum in your business. Now, this does one thing really, really important for you. It makes sure that you're solving the right problem inside of your business. You don't want to go solve uh, a marketing problem, a perceived marketing problem. I've heard this all the time. Oh, Kent, I need to go to a new market. Uh, why would you say that? Well, I'm, I'm just not getting any deals done. Well, what's your cost per lead? Oh, that's $75. What's your cost per deal? $10,000. Oh, so yeah, it's taking you basically 30, 40, or it's taking you 80 leads to get a single deal done. No, I'm sorry, 120 leads to get a single deal done. You don't have a marketing problem. You have a conversion problem. By knowing exactly that, it allows you as the CEO to be in charge and solve the right problem and not spend time solving the wrong one. Again, this also, and this is just an example, guys. It allow, I'm just giving this to you as an example of one way this manifests itself in your business. Again, focus on increasing the LTV of the customer that you've already acquired. My entire point here is to give you the framework and then to try to give you these little examples inside of it that help you understand the way it actually works. And again, business today is an ocean of mediocrity. It is not easy. I mean, it's not hard to be really good in business right now. I mean, there's example after example after example of just cause of, of companies that are just that do as little as they possibly can to screw and just work at screwing their customers. It is not hard to be great here. Again, more real world applications. I'll give you one how you can extend the lifetime value of a customer. If you're a wholesaler out there right now, um, if you've ever, if you are a wholesaler right now, I want you to go into the comments or you do any wholesaling, um, go into the comments and let me know. Just put in there me, me, me. Okay, here you go. So I'm going to tell you, here's the fastest way that you double the profits, right? I'm talking about lifetime value of a customer. How is it that I can, I, you know, I get more out of a deal than anybody else? Well, my wholesale fee, if I'm flipping a, a property and I'm a wholesaler, in probably 75 to 80% of the cases, I am fixing it to, or I'm flipping it to a rehabber. That rehabber in almost every one of those cases is borrowing money from a hard money lender to, to buy that deal. Are there exceptions? Of course. But the vast majority are borrowing money from a private lender or a hard money lender which means my one transaction is leading to another transaction. I'm making a $20,000 profit when I flip it to them, but the rehabber then is going and borrowing money. And let's hypothetically in this particular case, say they are borrowing $200,000 to buy my deal. They're borrowing from a hard money lender. The interest in the points on that, they are going to pay over a 12 month period, approximately $24,000 in interest and points on that deal. So my $20,000 flip to this guy, wholesaler, uh, or me wholesaling it, the private money lender is going to, if the deal is out there for a year, is going to make another 24 grand. So what do we do? I basically tell everybody that we wholesale to, you have to borrow the money from me also to buy my deals. You're going to borrow it anyway. You are going to go borrow $200,000 from Sam down the street. I will match Sam's rates. Whatever rates he's giving it to you, you give it to me in writing and I'll match it. Nothing changes from you, Mr. Rehabber. Literally, you're getting the same rates, same terms, everything. The only difference is you have to borrow the money from me. If you borrow the money from me, then I sell you the deal. So bottom line, he wants the deal. I have the one thing he wants desperately, which is my deal, period. We live in an, in an environment today where everybody wants the deal. You want to borrow my deal or you want to buy my deal? I will sell it to you, but you must borrow the money from me. And if you borrow the money from me, I get to make an additional $24,000 if they keep it out there for 12 months. If they keep it out for 16 or for six months, I'm going to make approximately just to cut it in half, $12,000. But I've taken a $20,000 profit and doubled it and didn't spend one more dollar on marketing, didn't interrupt the transaction at all, didn't create one, any kind of business, anything. Literally, everybody was going to do the exact same thing. I just did it where it all had to come through me. Now, those of you that are saying, well, Kent, I don't have $200,000 to loan it out. Go to your local hard money lender and say, how about we partner? 
every deal I sell, I want to make sure that they borrow the money from you. In exchange, I want to make revenue out of that deal. You pay me, if you're gonna make $24,000, I want 30%. You send me 7,200 bucks. I will make it where they have to borrow the money from you in order to do a deal for me. What did I do? I took a $20,000 deal and turned it into a $27,000 deal, effectively adding 15% to my top line by being smarter than the next guy. This is not that hard, guys. It is super straightforward. But I want you to see this is the benefits of scaling a business. This is the benefit of opening your imagination, opening your eyes and understanding that you can turn this into a business. It doesn't have to be transactional. It doesn't have to be a grind. It doesn't have to be what you're going through right now, as many of you just admitted. You just have to get the knowledge and the training to understand that this is big and this is how it's actually done. If you guys are resonating with this, if you guys are finding a lot of value, just go into the comments, give me a hell yeah. Let me know. Uh, I mean, this is simple. This is straightforward. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hopefully my wholesaler just realized I just handed you a way to effectively double your business this year. You don't have to do one more transaction. You don't have to spend one more dollar in marketing, but you can double your business of what I just shared with you, that one thing. All right, here we go. If you don't know your LTV, then I can assure you, you are giving business away. Being a one trick revenue pony is a choice to give money away. I can tell you every major company out there, companies that we all transact with every day, absolutely understand this. Everybody on here does business with Amazon. You can't even get out of an Amazon cart without them suggesting something new to you. Hey, well, what about this? This is commonly bond to, bought together. And what about this? I mean, they understand how to make the lifetime value of a customer. I mean, I don't know how much anybody else spends, but for my family, it is tens of thousands of dollars because they've one, they've made it super easy. Two, they've created an advocate in us. And three, they constantly extend the lifetime value of the customer. I mean, they've got Alexa at this point suggesting to us on a uh, in my home, oh, by the way, you're probably running short on Lucky Charm cereal, you know, for your eight-year-old. You might want to uh, go ahead and order it. I mean, for God's sakes, they, it, they understand it better than anybody on the planet. So don't tell me this is, you know, any kind of, you know, out, out, of, the, out of the realm of what I'm talking about. I'm just showing you how to apply it in your own business right now. When you do this, Guys, you can outspend, outcompete any business. You can stop leaving leads money and scale on the table. You can clearly track what's working and you can absolutely skyrocket your ROI. You can take, you know, you can get three to $200 for every dollar you put out there in marketing because you just understand to how to do it better. Equally, when it comes to, and we're talking about income here, right? We're talking about profits. You gotta make sure that you're focusing on creating those passive income streams, right? Understand how you can extract that more value. I mean, we have right now in our, you know, our core business, one of the reasons why we do property management is because it creates over a million dollars a month in revenue and just property management fees. Our software and training business, it's over $500,000 a month in recurring revenue. It happens every month, whether we show up or not. I mean, I don't have to explain to you all the advantages of getting involved in real estate, right? And all the passive income you can create there. Right? If you've created a machine that's generating deals, then you should be taking uh, several down uh, from time to time. You know, if you're if you feel like you're too busy, well then go deploy your money into turnkeys. Go get started in hard money or private lending, or go educate yourself on how to do seller finance deals, or get those people in house. Add, all this I was just showing you earlier. Right, when you have these channels, you clearly creating multiple income streams and extending the lifetime value of the customer. Last but not least, and that's progress. This is probably the most important thing. This is kind of the come to Jesus, if you will, right? One of the biggest problems I see with the hustlers that are out there, the grinders that are out there, and again, I don't say it in a derogatory way, but I know most of you are trapped in that right now, is you're not running it like a business. And you're trying to compete with guys like myself and institutional buyers and big companies that do look at it like a business. 
So if you want to own a business and you want to scale and you want to create time freedom and you actually want to get you know out of this business what you started, then you have to start acting like it. And so measure everything. How many, when we do a marketing campaign, how many leads does it generate? You know, what are, what does a lead cost us? What is our contact rate? How many leads does it take us to get an appointment? How many appointments does it take to us to get a contract? How many contracts do we have to get to get it to close, right? All of it, you've got to have clear goals, metrics, and KPIs, key performance indicators, where you are absolutely measuring everything and meeting on it with your key team members, right? As you're hiring and scaling, you're going to bring people on board. And some of you are like, well, Kent, I don't even know how to do that. Well, that's you know kind of what we're here for. We showed you how to do these things, but you are clearly going to hire key people that are better than you. And that is a massive, massive part of it because that's how you and the business moves forward. You got to push yourself to be around the best and the brightest. I mean, by the look of the comments in here, you know, most of you are, are hopefully realizing that there's levels to this shit. Like you, we, people think differently. I can assure you that if you got in a room with me and we sat around uh, and talked about business for a little while, you would start to think very differently. How many of you agree with that? Let me just ask you. I mean, you know, we've spent 50 minutes here together. And in 50 minutes, how many of you appreciate that just the conversations would be considerably different than probably most of you are having on a day-to-day -day basis when you get around successful people that look at it a little differently. Go in the comment, let me give, give me a hell yeah. Love to be the dumbest person in the room, I love that. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. You are who you are friends with, amen, okay. So you cannot, you gotta surround yourself with success and that means in a lot of cases, don't want to get too high and mighty here because but this because it's sometimes a hard pill to swallow but you got to really take into account the people that are in your circle the people that are that are you know a lot of times trying to protect you but ultimately they're holding you back you got to surround yourself with with success you can never stop growing and never stop learning and clearly as a mentor used to tell me there's only one way to coast and that's downhill you've got to continually be making progress you cannot you have to understand in all likelihood Right. If you are a grinder right now, and as many of you as I did have identified that, if you are a hustler right now, in all likelihood, if you're not just starting out, you're probably plateauing at some level. You have to evolve to the next level. You have to get to where you become the CEO. You have to get comfortable. Um, it, it, and that requires learning new skills, just like learning this business when you started out, learning how to become a CEO in this business is a different skill set altogether, which brings me to um, while I have you, I'd love to talk to you about what's happening February 4th and 6th, 4th through the 6th, I should say, here in San Diego. Somebody mentioned it earlier, our Scale and Escape Summit. I want to personally invite you guys to join us either online or live in person. We are going to have uh, a historic event. Last time I did this event was in 2019, pre-COVID, and we are a very very excited about that as rick has put it in the comments just now and we still have three days at scale and escape yes you do my friend this is exactly what this entire topic about is about this is your chance to surround yourself with successful real estate and business leaders this entire event is not about how to go flip a house how to go rehab a house this is, entire event is how do I take my existing business, whether it's brand new or it's existed for 10 years, and take it to the next level. I've invited some of my pers personal close friends to join me here. I've got all kinds of amazing people, but people that will challenge you to be better and give you the roadmap. A guy like Bobby Castro up there in the top left-hand corner, recently him and his wife recently sold their business for $1 billion. Right, based in South Florida, now has a $350, $400 million rental portfolio. Jamil and Pace Morby, they don't need any introduction. They're on TV every week now with uh, triple digit flip, and they're out there wholesaling and flipping hundreds of houses. Own a franchise called Keegley that wholesales thousands of houses a year. Billie Jean needs no introduction, one of the most prolific marketers in the world today, generates millions 
of leads and is going to stop by and share exactly how you do that. Uh, Jesse Itzler, the husband of the founder of Spanx, um, Sarah Blakely, he is also, he is the founder of Marquee Jets. He is the founder of Zyco Water. He sold both of them Warren, to Warren Buffett and Coca-Cola. He's the owner of the Atlanta Hawks. He is coming by. Lawrence Malo, one of the most successful real estate investors you could ever meet based out of Tampa, Florida, has a very similar organization to ours. Um, multiple businesses and revenue streams. Ed Milet, the guy needs no introduction, one of the top podcasts in the world. Uh, one of the 50 wealthiest people under 50 a net worth in excess of $300 million has built an empire by basically what I've shown you. And by the way, this is just a handful. There are a total of 15 speakers. This is nine, right? I mean, I've got unbelievable Aaron Wagner's coming by. I've got Ryan Steumann that will be there. I've got, I mean, we've got some serious, serious, serious players that will be there. Again, you can attend live or virtually. So there is no excuse. Somebody gets on here and says, oh, Kent, well, I, those dates don't work for me. Bullshit. You can make them work. Tickets are on sale right now. Virtual today is $77. Bucks. General admission is $297. VIP is $897. With VIP, you get early access. You, we have uh, VIP lunches. Uh, we have a VIP reception kind of cocktail thing that's happening up on the rooftop of the of." Hard Rock, that's going to be amazing. You get access to all the speakers. The speakers are doing their luncheon. Eddie's or Jesse's going to hang around and do a special VIP presentation for everybody, in addition to the one he does to the core audience. This is an opportunity to really rub shoulders with millionaires and billionaires, and it's really going to be a very, very special event. I can tell you people point back to this event, and a lot of these people that you see on the screen point back to this event and said, this is the event that changed my business forever. All you need to do right now is open up a new tab. Do not close this one, but open up a new tab and go to attendscaleandescape.com. Attendscaleandescape.com. If you sign up for VIP, you do get recordings of the event. Um, okay, attendscaleandescape.com. I will tell you just as a heads up, prices are going up on January 10th. You'll see all that on the website. But here's what I'm also going to do for you. We have 129 people on here right now. For the next 50 ticket buyers, people that buy tickets, whether you buy one, two, three, or four, I don't care. The next 50 transactions, this code I'm going to give you will only work for 50 transactions in the cart. You can save 50% off those prices. When you go to check out, you use promo code KCBONUS, just like you see it on the screen, all caps. KC bonus when you check out and you will save 50% at checkout as my gift for being on here or with you guys hanging out with me, right? I know I based on, on the feedback, I can see that you guys found a ton of value um, in the actual presentation. Let me just stop here. Let me hear you. If you found a ton of value in the presentation and this is a, this actually was very different than anything you've ever seen. Let me hear you. Hell yeah. And the, uh, in the comments here. Dude, it's been awesome. Hell yeah, hell yeah, lots of value. Awesome, God, love that, love that. All right, so again, I'm gonna put the website back on the screen here in just a second, so don't worry. Um, but this is, God, this is, you know, imagine three days of this, right? This, is, this has been 45 minutes, 55 minutes, whatever it's been here, right? So this is going to be a hell of an experience, not just from an education standpoint, but it's an opportunity to get around greatness and expand your imagination. Again, you're going to save 50% plus, I'm going to do something else for you. If you're one of those first 50, it's the reason why I told you to open up the tab because you don't want to screw around here. I'm going to give you three bonuses. I'm going to give you number one, my virtual wholesaling mastery course. It's $1,000 online. I'm going to give it to you free access. It's yours. I'm going to give you my certified wholesaling mastery course. It's $1,500 online. I'm going to give it to you if you're one of the first 50. And number three, I'm going to give you my course, Prospects to Profits, which is all about turning more of the deals and having better conversations with the sellers and converting more of them into actual deals. This is great, great, great trainings. That's $3,000 in trainings, and that's 50% off. Again, if you go to attendscaleandescape.com and you have to use the code have to use the code KCBONUS, all caps like that, 
And if you are one of the first 50, all, everything I just told you will take place. We will get you set up with 50% off, and then my team will, uh, my support team, our, what we call member services, will send out access to all three of those courses to you first things in the morning. So again, that will expire after the first 50. So if you guys are on here, please make sure that you go use that. I do not want you to miss out. Listen, if you do miss out and the code doesn't work, it's still a hell of a value and I still wanna see you there. I'll leave you with this, because I shared two stories with you. One was the plane, one was losing the business. But I'll also share another one with you, because there's gonna be some people that sit around and say, well, I'll just get to it later, I'll just get to it, or I don't have time to scale, or I don't have time to build, or maybe this isn't right for me. I have a $30 million lesson I wanna share with you, and that was my uncle. Six months before I was on that plane, my uncle, who was a CEO, one of the largest cruise organizations and travel organizations in the world, uh, he retired, uh, or he retired the year before, and he was 60 years old. I'm 51 right now, so 60 is nowhere near as old as I thought it was, uh, you know, just a few short years ago. And when he retired, they wrote him a $30 million check. Now, this guy spent weeks and months and years at a time away from his family, all in the name of, I'm going to go, I'm, I'll just get to it. I'll just get to my family. I'll just get to this or that in life. I'll just get to where I'm when I'm actually living. I'll enjoy it one day, right? Instead of taking hold of the moments that are right in front of me. And so he got that check and sure enough, as fate would have it, six months later, he was diagnosed with cancer. And six months after that, I got a phone call on October 12th to drive to Daytona Beach as fast as I could because he was just asking for me. This is my mentor in life. And he was about to pass away. He had deteriorated dramatically and wanted me to be there and so i got to the hospital in daytona beach florida as fast as i possibly could literally getting updates on my phone as i'm pulling into the parking lot running down the hall come coming into his room and he is all hooked up uh to machines uh, you know and couldn't breathe etc had um a whiteboard and i'll never forget it here's a guy who had 30 million dollars plus in his bank account works his ass off to get there, right? Working for somebody else, putting his dreams on hold over and over and over and over and over again. And he wrote on the board, celebrate my life. And then he wiped it off and wrote, I just wish I had more time. And then he held my hand and he passed away. I thank God I was there. And it had a profound effect on me because what had come you know, the effect it had on me and what it what I'll never forget is I can remember thinking so clearly this guy had all the money in the world and it couldn't buy him the only thing he really wanted. Time. And so time is not something that is trivial in any way, shape, or form. Stop telling yourself that I will just get to it X, Y, or Z. I, the reason our motto inside of this entire organization is the time is now is because it's just true. Do whatever it takes to create time freedom. For many of you, the business has got you and it's holding on to you and you don't have time freedom. So do whatever it takes to learn how to change that outcome. Stop being a hustler and start being a business owner. And that's what that event can start you down the path, inspire you, give you the knowledge, surround you with success, give you the, the, the basis to go and make that happen. The site, one more time, somebody's asking me for it, is attendscaleandescape.com. And you must use the bonus code KC bonus, and everything else will take care of itself. So, Chuck, hopefully that answers your question. And Anthony, hopefully, or who was it, uh, Rob, hopefully that answers your question. Attend scaleandescape.com. Hopefully I get the opportunity to see every one of you personally. If you are on virtual, we will have what we call our 360-degree experience. We're spending a lot of money to make sure that is an amazing experience as well. Ideally, you're there with us. And you get to soak it up and do the VIP and hang out with me and the other speakers and all the amazing people that will be there. This is, event will be filled with high caliber people. Again, this is not a newbie event. Not a lot of people are gonna be in that room trying to learn how to do a deal. There'll be a lot of people just like you trying to figure out how to escape the grind. The grind. That is why it's called Scale and Escape. Hopefully that makes sense now. Um, all right, so let me go through here and pick
four people that I want to give $250 to. And, and this is in no particular order. I'm just going to go through here and randomly pick some people. Um, Brian Zeidelman, let me just go ahead and write you down, brother. Brian, uh, you are the big winner on this call. Zeidelman uh, of 250 bucks. Let's see here. Um, let's see. See, I'm just going through, going through, just randomly grabbing just wherever my cursor is stopping. Um, let's see here. Anthony Ferrante. I think that's how you say that. Anthony Ferrante. Hopefully you're still here, Anthony. Um, let's go through here. And Tamdi Fatima. So I, I'm sure I butchered that name. I apologize. T A M. D-E-A-H-F-A-T-I-M-A. -A -A. And one last more. Rena W, R-E-Y-N-A-W. You are my four winners. I, we will take care of getting those out there to you as well. Again, guys, attend scaleandescape.com. Use the code KC bonus. I know I ran over about 10 minutes here. My apologies, but hopefully you guys found value in this. And uh, you will also get... Um, a copy, a recording of this in an email here shortly. So with that, uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. As always, hopefully you guys got a ton of value and you guys are all registered for the event and I cannot wait to see you guys soon. Peace, take care, God bless.